if it is or if it ain't, it's going to come out. Good morning, everybody. It's your girl, Miracle Sims, and you're listening to God, Sex, and Love. Your daily dose of inspiration and juice. It is March the 15th, 2023, and today the topic is assuming. Happy Tuesday. No, happy Wednesday. Happy Wednesday, everybody. I hope that you all had a great day yesterday. Mine was just fine. Uh, My mom called me out, y'all. She was like, listen, Miracle, you didn't show your hair yesterday (laughs) Um, on the juice. So here it is, y'all, for those that care, you know. Um, I know it was a long time coming and everything like that. And I kept it wrapped up yesterday. But I was like, let me just show (laughs) y'all today. Uh, I guess because that wasn't fair because y'all been on this journey with me, right? (laughs) But anywho, um. Yesterday, all I did, um, the main thing I did was had a conversation with a gentleman that goes to my church who has an awesome app and whatnot, but hopefully I'll talk to y'all about all of that another time when I get more information. But outside of that, well, NJ had a class and that was pretty much it. Like that was my, my Tuesday. Um, this morning I woke up at 4.22. I mean, no, I woke up at 4, but I didn't start my routine until 4.22. And um, there was some significant verses and whatnot um, that I came across. But the thing is, as I was reading those different verses, what was standing out to me the most was wisdom. And um, this idea of getting and gaining more wisdom and I guess I was ultimately reminded of this image that I came across this morning and I shared it on our Facebook um and everything like that apparently there's this woman that has this Instagram it's called um God good great God so good dot great dot God and on it she makes all these like really cool you know images that um shows Bible verses and things that correlate. And so the one that I shared this morning said, when to keep your mouth shut. And then it had all these verses of of when you should keep your mouth shut. And um, I guess I was reminded of that this morning as I was reading the verses that I came across with 422. And so I know my methods, right, may seem weird. Um, I know I talk about this stuff all the time where it's like I'm struggling between when to stand up for myself, right, and when to just let things be and let God take care of it. And most of the time, I just let things be and let God take care of it because my thing is like the stuff that be in my head to say back to people when things happen don't seem to be the right thing to do. So I just be like, "Mm, I'm just going to not say nothing you see and I know on one hand that that makes me come across very I don't know weak meek mild all those different things which aren't bad maybe weak isn't a good way to be thought of but I mean the rest of meek and mild and whatnot doesn't seem to be a bad trait but like I tell y'all all the time, what I've been receiving over the years is miracle you're too nice, miracle you're doing this thing wrong, you know, X, Y, and Z. But then when I read the Bible, it tells me, you know, to turn out the cheek and stuff. So I'm like, I mean, am I doing it wrong or, or is this another thing where the world is telling me to handle this thing in a, a certain way and the Bible tells me the opposite? Um, and so I go back and forth. <laughs> I feel like I tell y'all this all the time. Well, anywho, um, I guess I was reminded of all of this this morning and I just was like, you know, I ended up just studying the word assume and assuming and assumptions because a lot of the issues that I'm facing is things where it's like I'm left to assume what the problem is, right? Instead of just really addressing whatever the problem is, it's like I I keep being in these positions where it's like I can't do anything but speculate what the problem is, you know? And, And then when I'm speculating, it don't look good. And so I'm like, 
I just want to be done with the problem, you know? <laughs> I really don't want to even face the problem. I just rather like let it just can we be done with it, you know? Um and and I end up, I guess, assuming, which we all know that quote around assuming, right? Uh I mean, you know, I don't have to say it, right? <laughs> you when you assume you make a right out of you and me, right? <laughs> um <sighs> And my thing is, this can be combated with communication, right? If you're communicating, then, you know, we don't have to assume. But as long as there's no communication, then there's nothing but assumptions. And I've shared with you all a week or so ago um, another case of this and um, where I was like, man, I might need to do something. And I started looking into ways to get something done. And then this thing I know... Um, the Lord kind of showed me like, hey, whoa there. And that's what the, the topic was that day. It's like, hey, hold on. Just just hold on. Um, and I'm like, well, Lord, you know, not say when you're going to fight my battle, Lord, or whatever. And I'm, I'm sure there's plenty of people in the Bible that ask that question too. Like, when are you going to avenge us, Lord? You said you're going to avenge us. Um, and not that I want to be avenged. It's just, I don't want to deal with it. <laughs> I don't want to deal with my problems. Is there anybody else out there? Y'all don't want to deal with your problems. Um... So it's like, eh, can it just be done? I mean, you took other things away. So just take these things away too, Lord, if you don't, you know. But obviously, um, I think what I'm seeing as I keep going through life and, and going through these type of things is that I think the Lord wants me to handle these things in another way. And that's why I showed y'all uh, or, or shared with you guys the other day. I don't know if it was yesterday. Maybe it was Monday. One of those days about fighting battles for other people on their behalf and different things like that. So... I'm like, okay, because again, I, you know, when you're in the midst of situations, you'd be like, mm, how do I deal with this? Or, or again, if you're looking at a person, right, you're like, okay, this is what this person is doing. But at the same time, the Bible tells us that we're not fighting against flesh and blood. It's, you're not really dealing with the people. You're dealing with the spirit that may be attached to the people. And I know that sounds crazy, <laughs> but I mean, that's what the Bible tells us and stuff. And so... With all of this on my heart and mind this morning, this is what I studied. <laughs> I studied this whole thing about assuming and assumptions and, and all this stuff. And I'm just going to share with you all what uh, I came across and I guess what the ultimate uh, juice is to handle all of this stuff. So let's get into it. Uh, assuming. Assuming. So when I looked up the definition of assume, it says, supposed to be the case without proof supposed to be the case without proof and see that's the thing again yeah I think a lot of us can assume we can suppose that something is the case without having the proof without knowing for sure and and that's one of the times when I when I read on that that image if you guys go and look at it one of the cases is like when you don't have all the information it's probably one of them times you should be quiet <laughs> um because I mean we can see again all around of us what it all around us what it looks like to make assumptions right what it looks like to voice your opinions and whatnot without having all the information and then you look crazy at the end of the day you're like uh, you know people looking at you like what what are you doing like and stuff and so yeah so let's get into some bible <laughs> what does the bible have to say so uh john 7 and 24 it says do not judge by appearances but judge with right judgments and that's what it says <laughs> do not judge by appearances oh, excuse me did i read the right one did i say john 7 24 anyway i must have skipped one so i'm gonna i gotta go back and read another verse as well but john 7 24 says do not judge by appearances but judge with right judgment I know there's this whole thing, you know, judge, let, let you not be judged. Don't judge me, blah, blah, blah. And it's, people are, again, that's, that's talking without knowing. Because <laughs> the Bible does give Christians the right to judge, you know, um, in a lot of things. It's just saying judge with right judgment. At the end of the day, you can make a judgment about something when you have all the information. Um, so... Yeah, it don't. So we can't just look at appearances, right? And then make a judgment. Sometimes you gotta like listen to something. Sometimes you gotta 
again, get all the information and then you can make a judgment rightly uh, about whatever the situation is. Because we all know that phrase, look, the grass is greener on the other side, you know, or what I, or whatnot. And <laughs> which reminds me of this quote that I came across. This quote said, sometimes the grass is greener on the other side because it's fake. <laughs> So there you go, friend. Like, yeah, you could be looking from the outside into a situation and you're like, this is what it looks like. I'm going to make a judgment according to what I see. And, and that's not enough information according to what I'm receiving here today. So, yeah, yeah, get all the information. Get all the information. Then you can make a right judgment. Uh, here's the verse that I skipped over. It's Proverbs 18 and 2. It says, a who takes no pleasure in understanding, but only in expressing his opinion? Mm, well, <laughs> uh, look, maybe that's why I got uh, uh, skipped. Uh, well, that's why I skipped it mentally just now. Listen, am I stepping on my own toes this morning? I don't know. Um, I mean, you know, hey, as somebody that has struggled in life with sharing my opinion, um, I think to now be in this place where I am constantly always sharing my opinion. Um, it's new, right? It's a, it's a new place to be. And, um, and I don't want to lose that, right? I don't want to lose that momentum and that whatever the Lord is putting in me to be able to, to do that, right? To share my opinion as well. Um, but at the same time, right? We got to be getting an understanding about whatever we're sharing our opinions about. Right. Uh, you know, um, to just, again, share your opinion without getting an, a full understanding is what, uh, well, the Bible says a fool does that. Um, so, yeah. Is that some Pope today? <laughs> Do we not want to hear that? Is that not good? <laughs> we don't like that. But, um, I mean, I don't think anybody wants to be considered to be a fool, right? But, I mean, I think, again, these things are written and said so we can know if you don't want to be considered to be a fool, then don't do that, right? Don't take pleasure in, you know, take more pleasure in understanding a situation versus just giving your opinion on the situation. Again, I feel like we see this all around us, y'all. Like, I mean, <laughs> just a quick scroll on social media, YouTube, you can hear so many opinions about a, a topic. And you're like, and, and half of them, you're like, where are they getting their information from? Especially... Sorry, I mean, I guess this is Bible study, what I'm sharing here. So, especially in regards to the Bible, man, you know, I'm asking that question a lot. Like, we talk to people and they say stuff and I'm like, out of all my studies, I ain't seen what you talking about, you know? And it's like, but they, they stand so hard and they, they, they want to, you know, be so loud about that thing. Oh, Lord. Okay. I won't get too deep, but I saw a video yesterday and it was this, um, I guess it was some type of debate happening. And one individual was saying things that completely was not biblical, um, but trying to use Bible to negate Bible, which was interesting. And the person <laughs> just asked the, the person that they were talking to, just pretty much asked simple questions. And it's like knowing that they had been caught in whatever the falsities was, the person didn't want to obviously answer those questions because it's like, then it admits that you didn't know what you was talking about. And so without getting into like the subject matter and any of that, it's just in any aspect, we could be like that. And um, so anyway, like the Bible said, and all you'll get an uh, get understanding <laughs> and everything like that. Oh, man. Uh, I, this is amusing to me this morning. Anybody else? Okay. <laughs> so then Proverbs, y'all. Proverbs 25 and 8. It says... Do not hastily bring into court for what will you do in the end when your neighbor puts you to shame? Ooh. Yeah, yeah, I mean, <laughs> yeah, you can easily be put to shame if you're, if you, you know, be hasty and make hasty decisions, right? And, and assume you make an assumption and you be hasty about that assumption, assumption said the assumption if you be hasty about that assumption then yeah yeah you could be easily put to shame and so you know yeah i mean make sure we get full knowledge and full information and because if you have truth then you can definitely stand on the truth right um 
and everything like that. But if you hastily and you don't really know what's the truth, but you're like, I think it's this, you're assuming or whatever the case is, then yeah, you can be one of those fools put to shame. Uh-oh. Oh, well. <laughs> According to the Bible, no, not that I ain't calling you that. I'm just saying what the Bible says. <laughs> Uh, Galatians 6 and 1. It says, Brothers, if anyone is caught in any transgression, you who are spiritual should restore him in a spirit of gentleness. Keep watch on yourself, lest you too be tempted. So this reminds me a little bit of the conversation I had yesterday with the gentleman from my church, right? Um, he asked me a question. He was like, you know, what do you think about this? Basically, he was like, whose fault do I think it is that um, believers are, or or unbelievers aren't coming to the faith and or this, that, and the other, or, you know, or younger people may not be coming to the faith in these days. And I'm like, well, I know that we can assume, right, that it's the Christian's fault because they are being hypocrites and all the different things that people have to say about Christians. But at the same time, I mean, I guess just with the studies that I've been doing and whatnot, I, I can't fully subscribe to that narrative because it's everybody's individual choice what they do with Jesus. Because regardless of what I say or what the pastor say or what anybody say, if or any Christian do, the message of Christ doesn't change. So you as an individual have to decide what you're going to do with that information. So I can't take ownership of anybody not coming to Christ just because I fail or fall short. Because all of us fall short. All of us are sin and fall short according to the Bible. None of us is perfect. So I get Christians taking ownership and doing better and doing things in this way like I just read, and and that is part of the problem as well, um, but and when it comes to individual ownership of what individuals do with their own free will, you know, that person has, they're only going to stand for themselves, they can't point at me and say, well, miracle fall, fell short, and so that's the reason why I stumbled, like, you know, anyway, so that was the conversation that we had, and so as I was reading this verse this morning, I was reminded of that, because yeah, fellow believers, like, there, we need to be Right. Doing things the way Christ did at the end of the day. Like, so if you're not doing things the way Christ did, then you're probably not a real Christian. And I mean, I know that's hard to say and whatever, you know, but and I, hey, I'm not perfect neither. I got to, you know, again, I just told you all of my situations I need to be more Christ like about. Right. <laughs> um, and handle it in a more Christ like way, even though it looks weird and feels weird and people looking at me crazy. Like, oh, miracle, you being too nice. And I'm over here like I'm just trying to do things the way the Lord wanted me to do it. Um, partially because I don't want to deal with it. I want to just let the Lord deal with it, honestly. But still, you know, um, but in, in a lot of ways, that's what Jesus did as well. Like there was times that he flipped table and said some stuff. And then there was times that he let the situations be and, and was quiet and, and whatnot. Um, so yeah, yeah. I mean, with the spirit of gentleness, like everybody, again, if we, if we all remember that we all fall short, then we all understand that there's going to be a time that I need grace and mercy. I needed grace and mercy. I'm probably going to still need grace and mercy. Therefore, let's say if I'm anybody that I, that may be in transgression with me, if this role was reversed, I would hope that people show me grace and mercy in spite of my transgressions, right? So therefore, I need to do that same thing to others. And it don't look good, feel good to do that. I'll be honest. Like, sometimes I'm like, Lord, like, I don't, Either I don't want to deal with the thing or I don't want to be taken advantage of, right? I don't want to feel like, you know, mishandled or any of that type of stuff. But, um, you know, this is what the word has to say. Now, I mean, now granted, it do say other stuff too now. Because it do say, hey, if somebody, if you come to that person and, you know, you do it God's way and stuff um, multiple times. And that person just want to stay in their sin or that person just want to continue to sow a, a seed of discord then separate yourself all that type of stuff like that type of stuff is in the bible as well but in regards to this particular verse it's telling us that hey if anyone's caught a transgression you know restore them in a gentle way a spirit of gentleness so you know just saying y'all there's room for improvement in the the uh, body of christ we all know that <laughs> um so yeah <laughs> proverbs 
18 and 13. It says, if one gives an answer before he hears, it is his folly and shame. So, yeah, that's why your girl be quiet a lot of times. <laughs> that's why your girl be over here trying to just get an understanding before I make hasty decisions and moves. Because when you get in your feelings, man, you be like, you know, you, you make some some foolish moves and decisions. So it's just like, you know. Um, so, I mean, ultimately, I guess that's the juice, y'all. <laughs> That's the juice this morning. I mean, I ended up uh, for the Go Deeper section just writing down a, verse, a bunch of verses that are centered around how to get more wisdom, right? How to get an understanding and whatnot. And so if you guys are there, right, if you need more understanding and wisdom in general, then I would check out the verses in the Go Deeper section and hopefully, you know, peruse them and let them marinate on your heart, souls, and minds. Because like I said, that is the juice. Now, the Bible verse of today is, or it's Bible verses of today. And it's Isaiah 55, 6 through 7. It says, Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Call ye upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts. And let him return unto the Lord and he will have mercy upon him. And to our God, for he will abundantly pardon Friends, I hope you all enjoyed this juice this morning. Thank you so much for listening to God, Sex, and Love. Your daily dose of inspiration, the juice. I pray you guys can go forth and have a wonderful day. And I look forward to talking to you all tomorrow, if the Lord's will. Bye-bye. Did you know that you can support us for just 99 cents a month? That's right, friends. You can support everything that we do here at GSL for just 99 cents a month. Take a look around wherever this post is. You might see a link or maybe even a button that says support. Go there. Check out the options. Consider supporting us because, you know, we enjoy bringing you all the daily inspiration as well as the weekly talk show. But we have much, much more to come. Thank you so much for the consideration. Bye-bye.